also try and uh, contextualize what these developments mean for India, especially at the global stage. And for that, I'm joined in by our guests, uh, Major General Gigi Devedi, who's also a defense expert. I'm also joined in uh, by Major General Rajan Kocher, who's also a defense expert. Uh, uh, Major General Gigi Devedi, if I may begin with you, uh, what is the kind of uh, messaging that you see now uh, with the commissioning of INS uh, Vikrant? Because uh, let's not forget, uh, China's growing might in the Indian Ocean. We've had concerns as far as that spy sh uh, ship docking in Hambantota port is concerned. We've seen what's happening in Djibouti. China's naval base is already operational. At such a time, how crucial is uh, going to be the commissioning of INS Vikrant for India? Well, I think uh, commissioning of INS Vikrant is historic from many perspectives. It's historic when you demonstrate your nation's capability and will. It is historic when it gives a message to the adversary, friends and foes. It is historic when you talk about uh, self-reliance. And uh, finally, I think it is historic because it adds a new dimension to India's uh, defense capability. Now, coming to the specific question you asked about geopolitical right. environment. Well, the future is going to be decided in Indo-Pacific, and that's where the contours of future world order is going to be shaped because Indo-Pacific is a region of the future, not only from the geopolitical angle, but from geoeconomics because 60% of the trade uh, passes through this, and uh, all the superpowers and potential superpowers are in the play for domination of the region. Coming specifically to China, because I follow China very closely, when I was defense attache in China toward the end of 2000, right. Chinese Navy did not have any aircraft carrier. And that's the time they bought one scrap, uh, that is Varyag, uh, from Ukraine, that was erstwhile uh, Russian uh, Soviet Union aircraft carrier, and they refurbished it. And in 2011, it was reincarnated as Leoning. Now, that is the first aircraft carrier of the U.S. or the Chinese Navy. And then they went into a second one, Shantung. And third one, which is almost operationalized, is Fujian. Now, the Chinese uh, realized that they became a second-rate nation. They be became a nation which are overpowered by the colonies, uh, colonial power, because of the neglected Navy. And in 2015, the Chinese changed the naval strategy from the coastal defense to the defense of high seas. And that's where they have gone in a big way right. to build up the Navy. Just for information, today, if you take the numbers per se, Chinese Navy is the biggest with 350 naval ships. And by 2030, they'll be having 450 naval ships. Of course, they are not at par with the capability with U.S. Navy, mm. but in numbers, they are ahead. And then they have the Coast Guard, which has about 100 ships, so all put together, Chinese are going about very, very systematically in building their naval capability and to dominate the Western Pacific right. and Indian Ocean. Alongside what I wish to say, they have also done a lot of you know work on the ground. They have now almost half a dozen naval bases which are coming up or which are in the process are coming up, starting uh, with Cambodia, then they have a naval base coming up in Chowpu in Myanmar. They have Hamban Tota. Then they have Djibouti, Solomon Islands, and to name a few. Right. Therefore, I think if the future is going to be decided by the sea, it, it's, it's very interesting how you are also focusing on 